This is lesson 8.6. It's relating fractions and whole numbers. So the question is, I ran a mile, Ms. Hannah ran three thirds of a mile. Did we run the same amount? So if I have a one mile to represent that, then I need to also model the one third parts. So if I have, there's one third of a mile, another one third, so that's two thirds of a mile, and then three thirds of a mile. So if you have a number line and they end at the same point, then those are considered equal. So yes, we ran the same amount because one mile is the same as having three thirds, which is the same as a whole. So let's say if I asked, um, if I ran a mile and Ms. Hannah ran two thirds of a mile, So then our model would look like this. Here's one third and here's one third. Would these be the same amounts? No, they wouldn't be because this ends here. That's not a full mile. And this one is a full mile. Okay, what if I said that Ms. Hannah ran one third of a mile? Then it would be like this. So here's my one mile. One third ends here. They are not equal. So this first part of the lesson is just knowing what's gonna be equal to something else. So if I'm talking about third sized pieces, how many of those do I need to make one whole? I need three of them. So three thirds is going to be equal to the one mile. Now I can use any part to represent one mile as long as they're equal sizes and I keep track of them. What if I used a fifth sized piece? So there would be a fifth and five fifths. So I need five fifths to make one whole. So pretty much one can be equal to three thirds. It could be equal to four fourths. It's equal to five fifths, six sixths. Anytime the numerator and the denominator are the same, you are representing one whole amount. So you can take one whole and represent it by any number. It could be, if you wanted it, you could also represent one whole as one, what is this? Like that, 100,000 over 100,000. And that would still represent one whole. What that means is you've cut that whole into 100,000 little tiny pieces. So that's the first part of the lesson. The next part is what happens when you have more than a whole. So if I have my whole and I'm going to represent it with fifth sized pieces, then I'm going to have how many fifth sized pieces? I need five of them. So remember the denominator, the bottom number tells us the size of the part. The top number tells us how many of those parts that we have. So I have, so now I've represented one whole. Let's say I ran and I ran farther than that. Let's say I ran another fifth uh, of a mile and then another fifth. So now the size of the piece is still a fifth sized piece, but how many of them do I have? I have five, six, seven. I have seven parts now. How do I, how do I write that? I'm going to write it still as the number of parts is seven. And what's the size of the part? It's a one fifth sized part. So my denominator still is going to be a five. Now, what do you notice about these? Here they're equal. This is not going to be equal. This is more. And the relationship between the numerator and the denominator, when the denominator is more than the numerator, sorry, when the numerator is more than the denominator, then you're like overflowing. You're going more than the whole amount. So this is called an improper fraction. It tells us we have more than a whole. How much more do we have? Well, here we have one and then two extra pieces. So there's the two extra pieces here. You can think of this like a cup of chocolate milk. If you had a cup of chocolate milk like this, and you've started filling it, you could have one fourth of it full, half of it full, three fourths of it full. And if you filled all of it, if this were in fourth sized pieces, that would be all of it. 
if I add more into it, what's going to happen? It's going to overflow. So you're going to have more than the whole amount. So here I have three holes. So if I write that three holes. So as a whole number, it's just three. I want to know what is that equivalent to? What is that equal to if I name it by its parts? Well, how many parts are there? Remember the numerator tells us, so if I shade this in, I'm talking about these parts. Now, how many are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six parts. So that's my numerator. And the denominator is the size of the piece. What is the size of this piece? It's a half-sized piece. So my denominator is going to be a 2. So this fraction tells me this is 3 holes, but I can also name it by a fraction, and it's going to be 6 parts, and each part is a, a half-sized piece, so 6 over 2. And how do you know that it's more than a whole? Because the numerator is more than the denominator. So if we tried it, we can try it again with anything. Okay, if we tried this one, what are the whole amounts? How many holes are there? There's one, two, three, four holes. So four is your whole number. So we're just gonna, we're talking about all of the parts. So they sh they're pretty much all shaded. Okay. So how do you write this as a fraction? You're going to say, well, how many parts do I have? I have three, six, nine, twelve. I have twelve parts. And the denominator, the bottom number, is the size of the part. So if I look at this, what is it broken up to? It's broken up into three parts. What do we call that? We call it a third. And how do we write that? It's just 12 over 3, so 12 thirds. So four, hole, four holes, if we break it like this, is equivalent or is the same as saying 12 over 3. And how do we know that it's more than a whole? Because the numerator is more than the denominator. So if you think of it, if I only talked about this one over here, this is 1. And what is the fraction for this? It's 3, 3 thirds. Here's the last part of the lesson. Uh, let's say that I ran around a block that was 1 -fifth of a mile long and I ran that 10 times. How far is that? How many miles is that? So you can start off with a model because that helps you visualize it, but pretty soon you won't need that. What you model is a one-fifth size piece, so a one-fifth. That's the size of the block. So I run around the block, it's one-fifth of a mile. How many times did I do that? I did that 10 times. So I need to show 10 times going around. So this represents 10 times that I ran around the block because each time is a one-fifth. Here's 10 times. How do I write that? Well, what this is is how many parts are there? There is 10 parts. That's the numerator. The denominator is what's the size of each part of it? And it's a one-fifth sized piece. So the part of it is a fifth. It's 10 over 5. So then I think, okay, if I want to represent that as a whole amount, I know it's larger than one because the, de the numerator is larger than the denominator. If I had this up here, how many fifth sized pieces do I need to represent one? I need five of them, five fifths. And how many would I need here? Another five fifths. So I know it's more than one. How much more than one? Well, here's where you're just, your math is going to start coming up. So if I think of it, how can I reduce this? This is the same as saying two holes or two miles. Okay. So there's two ways you can see that. One way is with a model, you can see, all right, how much of this makes a hole? Well, there's five of them. There's one and there's one. And if you don't have a model, you can still think of it. How many, in order for it to be one whole, I need five out of five. That's one. What would, so that takes away five out of five. Another five out of five is another one. So then I have my 10, here's five, and there's five. So I have two holes. Okay. 
<clears throat> you'll start to get it the more that you do it. It's going to start just clicking and you'll, you'll understand it right away. Try this one without a model. So same question. I ran around a block. The block is one fourth of a mile long, so it's one quarter of a mile. And I ran around it 12 times. So how many miles is that after I finish running 12 times? So in your head, what you're thinking of is, okay, how many times did I do it? That's my numerator. I did it 12 times. And my denominator is, what is the size of the piece? What am I, I'm doing 12 times a fourth and another and another and another. So my denominator is going to be a fourth sized piece. <clears throat> So you can get to the answer here very quickly without doing a model. If you understand the number of times you do it, that's like the number of parts, that's the numerator, and the denominator is the size of the part. It's a one-fourth sized piece. But there's one more step. I want to represent this as a whole number. So then I think, okay, how many times around makes one mile? Because I know it's more than a mile because four-fourths, Four-fourths is one mile, because I know numerator and denominator is the same. So I ran four times, that's one mile. And then I ran another four times, that's another mile. So there's another mile there. And then I ran another four times, is another mile. So if I break up those 12 times into a chunk of four, it's four, eight, and 12, now I can see how many miles, how many holes I've run. I've run one mile here, and another mile, and another mile, so I ran a total oops, of three miles. Okay, and again, pretty soon you will do all of this in your head. You will automatically see a number like this, and it's basically division. 12 divided by four is three, but to get to that point, you can understand like how you're breaking apart the miles and the parts. But really what it is, is you can just pull it straight from the question to a fraction. If you know your division facts, you can automatically see here that 12 divided by 4 is 3, and that's your answer.